Hi, I'm Professor Tim Scales. I'm also the director of the Center for Entrepreneurship and the Center for Economic Education here at Indiana University East. We're celebrating 18 years of In Your Business, as well as 35 years of Whitewater Community Television, also known as WCTV. As we celebrate these milestones, we'd like to go back and reflect on some of our earliest episodes of In Your Business. I hope you enjoy those early days. Hi, I'm Tim Scales, the director of the Entrepreneurship Center and the Sam Walton Fellow for Indiana University East. Today, we're working on another episode of In Your Business a program that's put together by SIFE, Students in Free Enterprise. What we like to do is we like to talk to an entrepreneur and we like to discover what they go through. Basically what we find out is there's a lot of risk involved with entrepreneurship as well as a lot of reward. We find that during the adventure, we have to look at things like the idea, the plan, and the execution. We always start off with public opinion, then we discover the entrepreneur, learn from them, and we go out in the field and actually see what they're doing. So please join SIFE as we discover entrepreneurship. flowers from Bluebells if I need a little pick-me-up, but other than that, never. I try and get flowers for my friends probably like once a month. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. I rarely utilize a florist, a flower or gift. I are Myers and Kroger, they all have a lot of that, those products, and if I can do my grocery shopping and pick up a floral display at the same time, I do it there. Mm, maybe once or twice, every couple months, not very much. On Mother's Day, so probably once a year. Actually, I utilize floral shops because I have a centerpiece or two, and one time my mother, years and years ago, said, whenever you want to pick me up, you should just go have something different done in your house and what she did was went and had a floral arrangement made so I've remembered that and a couple of times I've went to some floral shops in Richmond and had a gave my house a pick-me-up. No, very rarely. <laughs> Ooh, I love flowers. Um, I'm constantly, it's this huge joke, I'm constantly running into Tivoli Gardens because it's right around the corner from Lingo Real Estate. So I'm in there quite a bit. I said, I have an emergency, I need flowers. So I use them constantly. I love gifts of flowers. There's no better gift. Welcome to another episode of In Your Business. Today joining us is going to be Gail Luckett from Tivoli Gardens. Gail's the entrepreneur who brings smiles to many faces as they deliver beautiful flowers and beautiful things from Tivoli Gardens. So Gail, welcome to In Your Business. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we're excited to uh, learn a little bit about yourself as an entrepreneur and your business. And so why don't you just tell us a little bit about Tivoli Gardens? Well, Tivoli Gardens is a full service flower shop. Um, we service all occasions, funerals, weddings, um, birthdays, whatever your occasion might be. We try to fulfill whatever needs you have. Um, we have some gifts. We have uh, uh, fresh flowers. We have silk flower arrangements, which we do uh, per order mostly. Uh, if you have uh, a need for a certain kind of arrangement for your home, then we try to accommodate your needs. See, I think that's the interesting part about the business. When I visited, um, you can go in and, you know, a lot of shops you can go in and you can see what they have in inventory. But it's like you can create your own. We can. <laughs> and so That's the can, fun part. Yeah, it is. I mean, you can come in and you can just say, oh, what a beautiful vase. And then the next thing you know, you can turn that vase into just an absolute beautiful centerpiece. True. Uh, this is one of yours. Yes, it is. So you brought it to the show so we yes. would have some, some beautiful environment. One of our part-time girls that comes in and helps uh, at busy times did that for us. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, uh, Carol Schwarzkopf is her name. Okay. And she helps us out occasionally. She's a very nice girl and a very good designer. Okay. Well, she did a beautiful job. We appreciate you. you bringing it in. Thank you. So. Uh, Tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the store, though. Um, I know you get many visitors. 
but in addition, you also deliver a lot of arrangements, probably to the hospital, yes, to uh, maybe nursing homes, funeral mm -hmm. homes. Mm -hmm. Yes, all those places. Um, we do um, take a lot of things to Reed Hospital. Um, we take things uh, to the rooms. We don't leave them downstairs usually. We actually deliver them to the person that's receiving them ourselves. Very nice. Um, because we had had some people uh, not complaining but wondering where their flowers were because maybe we would take them in the morning and they wouldn't get them until later in the day when volunteers arrive. So we decided maybe our best thing would be to take them ourselves. So we do that. We do go to fun uh, nursing homes and the funeral homes. Okay and to houses all around town. See, and that's interesting, you call your shop the Tivoli Garden. Yes. And when I think of garden, certainly, you know, vegetables and such growing, and that's <laughs> not what we're at with your garden. Mm -hmm. um, your garden has everything from wind chimes, mm -hmm. um, bouquets of cookies. That's true. Uh, many special gifts, and, and I think it's just so unique. Well, thank you. We've tried to make it a little different than, than the average flower shop. We have mm -hmm. things that, that a lot of flower shops do not have. And, uh, but we enjoy that, trying to be a little bit different. Well, you certainly are. And uh, where do you get those ideas? Well, I don't know. <laughs> they just come. <laughs> My daughter uh, uh, suggested the cookie bouquets because uh, she had lived in Pittsburgh for a number of years. And she uh, had been in this little shop there who did this. And she thought it was such a unique idea. And, we thought about it for several months before we actually tried to do it, and then it really caught on. We do quite a few of them, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a unique gift. It's nice for men because a lot of times you'd like to send some kind of a, a little gift to a man, but you don't want to send him flowers, so it's a neat thing for that, and it's nice for younger people, teenagers, and children, little children, so it's been quite successful for us. Well, I think it's great, and it's interesting because when we interview with entrepreneurs, what we find out is so many people have ideas. They have these ideas, they think about them, they talk about them, they're always the what if. You know, what if I did this? Well, you have to do it. That's true. You can't just think about try. it. You have to take the idea, develop it, and then implement it. Mm -hmm. And then once you implement it, you have to evaluate it. <laughs> find out if the idea is really good. Right. But the only way to evaluate it is to implement it. Sounds like you do that. Well, we try to. And uh, I guess we probably maybe along the way have had some ideas that weren't terrific. But um, most of the things that we've tried have been good for us. Well, but I think if all the ideas were terrific, then you're not implementing enough ideas. Maybe that's true. <laughs> because you have to have some that are not so great. That way we know that you're having a good balance. So, but, but let's, let's look at you as an entrepreneur. I want to go back to your start. When did you start Tivoli Gardens? Tivoli Gardens um, sort of evolved after um, 1999. Okay. We moved uh, into the location where we are now. That's when it began. Okay, and prior to that, what did you do? Before that, we had a small shop in the old Richmond Court. Uh, there were a number of shops, shops in there at that time, uh, 13 I believe in all. Okay. And um, we were just interested in starting up a little venture. Uh, my husband was retiring and uh, we thought we'd just like to have something to do. We didn't think we were old enough to just retire. <laughs> so okay. we got involved there and we had a children's shop and uh, that went fine for a while but then the the building was sold and all of the other shops were moving out and the traffic was getting down to nothing so we either had to give up altogether or move to a new location so basically then you joined with 13 other shops mm -hmm. when you opened the children's shop yes you had a lot of success you had a lot of enjoyment uh, you loved doing it um, it came to a point where those people left you had to make a decision leave for good, reopen elsewhere, or become huge, and replace those 13 shops all in one. <laughs> that was a little more than we could handle, we thought. <laughs> I want to know if you ever thought about it. No, we didn't. <laughs> Not taking that whole building. <laughs> no, we didn't. Okay, because you know, some people do. You know, that's, that is the thrill and enjoyment about being an entrepreneur, is you can come up with the ideas. If you develop a plan that you believe in, then you can implement it and make it happen. You had to make a decision, 
It was yours. It was your decision. That's true. And you made it. Yes. And I, it's been a good one. I, I think you have made a good one. You've opened up Tivoli Gardens. Um, I'm, I'm guessing in that transition, did you know it was going to be what it is today? Oh, no, we had no idea. I didn't. Um, <clears throat> when we first uh, opened there in that location, um, we were doing the children's clothes. We moved that business over there and then we thought we would divide our space and we would do some flowers on half of the area and do the children's clothes in the other half. But uh, flowers soon overtook the other. Uh, it just kind of squeezed it out and mm -hmm. we eventually just went to flowers altogether. And well, I think you have a very interesting business from a standpoint that, you know, when I talk to entrepreneurs, they're very passionate about what they do. Okay, mm -hmm. and you couple your passion for what you do to others' passion for what they give. And I mean, it's all about emotion. Yes, it is. Everything that has to come into your store has to be a special time. I mean, whether it be a wedding, whether it be a birthday, a special holiday, an illness, death, marriage, um, but there's also something else that happens, and that's people are just decorating their home. Mm -hmm. And how does it feel to be a part of so many households? It's very, it's fun, it's rewarding. And um, I really enjoy talking to uh, people about their homes and what they want, um, helping them choose colors and types of flowers and types of arrangements that they need for their homes. And it's, it's a lot of fun. You're the expert. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I enjoy it. You truly are. I mean, I've been in a store I've been in the store as a customer. I've been in the store just, you know, visiting to see, see what your entrepreneurship is all about. And you are. You are the expert. I hear people ask you questions and you always have the answers. Now, those answers come with experience and expertise. It's the time you put into it and that's what makes a difference. Well, I've learned a lot along the way. I mean, you, you learn a lot from people that sure, you deal with. Sure. And. Um, um, Another interesting thing and very rewarding for me has been just the people that, that we've met that I would never have had an opportunity to meet otherwise if it hadn't been through the shop. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of nice people here and we feel very fortunate to have made uh, the acquaintances that we have and to get to know a lot of people better and that's been a very big part of it for me. Well, Gail, I'm sure <laughs> that at some point you probably thought you had a small local business. Yes, we did. But in the type of business you have, and actually in almost all entrepreneurs I interview with, I find out that it's not just local. You wind up shipping product many, many, many different places. You also wind up delivering product here for places all over the world. So what is the furthest that you can think of right now that maybe you've affected somebody? Europe. <laughs> Europe. Yes. We have a customer who comes in and uh, buys candy that's from a local uh, vendor and takes it with her when she goes to visit I guess friends in Europe so I know some of our product has ended up there Wow so she lives in Europe no she lives here but no, she, she visits. lives here and she visits Europe yes and when she goes on a trip she comes in and gets things like that to, she looks for things that are from this area okay to take with her how know. does that make you feel that you you are there I yes. mean it's when she thinks of where she wants to take gifts to Europe, she thinks of you. Well, we're quite flattered that she does. Did you ever think that would happen? No, never in my wildest dreams, no. Wow. We thought when we began that, that this would just be kind of a hobby-like thing, you know, that we would just kind of have in our spare time. <laughs> and that didn't last very long. Um, we were amazed at how quickly things picked up. And Sure, sure. So, you know, when I, when, I, when I speak with the entrepreneurs, I often ask the question about their hours because it's not a 40-hour work week. No, it's, it's not. not an 8 to 5. What does your hours look like, your own personal ones? Well, I'm there five days a week, and um, I do a lot of work at home at night, the book work things. Okay. It takes quite a few hours for all of that. So it's, I don't know how many hours, but it's more than 40, close to 50 probably. And, and you know, to look at this as a business after retirement, you know. Yeah, it was a little more than we really thought it would be. Yeah. But we still enjoy it, so as long as it's that way, we'll probably continue. Well, tell me, what are some tips you would give other entrepreneurs? 
people that are thinking, you know, I've got an idea, I should try it. Well, don't expect overnight success. That would be the first thing. Okay. It takes a long time for people to get to know you and to have confidence in you and what you do. And um, that's understandable. I think we're all that way. We're <clears throat> a little hesitant maybe to try something new. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I guess that would be one of the main things. Just don't expect to be successful the first year or two. Okay. It doesn't happen. So, so you have to be uh, patient. Right, you do. And you have to expect to work to be successful. It doesn't, doesn't come to you. Okay, perfect. Now, we also talk about risk and reward. Um, every entrepreneur has to take some risk. Mm -hmm. And they certainly hope to harvest the reward. Um, how is your experience with that? Well, you try different things. Some things you're successful at and some you're not. So you just try to be on thinking about that all the time and what works and what doesn't and try not to get yourself off on the wrong track too many times. So basically then you spread that risk out. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, and we've seen you do that because you, you brought in the children's store and you, you, you coupled that with the florist and then found out that the flowers took over yes, and do. today you, you don't have the children's store. No, we don't. <laughs> Did you think of selling that? Not really. We just got rid of the merchandise that we had and went on. It's, it's very difficult today to have a shop like that, a specialty shop, and be successful at it, particularly in a town this size or uh, anything smaller than Richmond. There just isn't enough demand for it now. Mm -hmm. um, so I think to be successful in that area, you have to be in a much larger city. Okay. Well, I think that's interesting, though, because it brings up another issue that I haven't discussed with a lot of entrepreneurs. But if a person wants to become an entrepreneur, if they have an idea, I would like to encourage them to speak with people who have experience, um, just like yourself. You ran a children's um, boutique, if you will, for several years successfully. Um, and then you moved on to another venue. If somebody was going to start that, you would be a great person to discuss it with. Thank you. And so I think that entrepreneurs, as they look at these ideas, they need to seek people with experience such as yourself and share those ideas. Well, I didn't do it all myself. I had help. Um, my daughter Joyce works with, at the shop all the time and she's been a tremendous help. Mm -hmm. um, my husband, Jack, uh, he has a business background, so he's very helpful in that area. And um, so I've, I've drawn from, from a lot of their experiences and, and their help, too. Well, I'm going to ask you another question uh, before we actually go out in the field and, and share your shop. But, um, and that is hurdles that maybe you feel you had to overcome as you become an entrepreneur. Do you recall any really difficult times that uh, maybe people could avoid with your uh, experience? Um, not right offhand. I can't remember of any really big obstacles other than 9-11 that um, had an effect. And of course, we were completely out of control with that. But I think that did affect everybody's business for the following year quite a bit. Okay. Um, we felt the impact of that. I think everybody just kind of drew in for a while. and um, but. As far as the business part, I can't think of anything that, that we've had a problem with in that respect. Okay. Well, that's great. I mean, but what you do bring out is the fact that we cannot control. I mean, we can contribute to a local economy and to a national economy and even to a global economy, but we can't control it. No, we cannot. And so we have to be able to be reflective and be able to adjust and make change and move forward as things do affect us. True. I think we were very fortunate we went through. There was a period of a year or more where things tightened up a lot, and I think uh, a lot of flower shops didn't make it through that, from what I've heard from our suppliers, that there were, there were shops that just couldn't hold on through that area. And um, we were fortunate. We were able to, and we're ready for the next one, <laughs> whatever that might be. Well, we hope it is, it's long and far away. We do. So, well at this point in the show, what I like to do is turn it over to Johan. And Johan likes to go in and discover the business. Now, I'm kind of excited to see what, it, what attracts Johan in your business, whether it will be the bouquet of cookies, or putting together her floral arrangement, or the wind chimes. Mm -hmm. So let's send Johan out to the store and see what he likes to do. Fine, thank you. 
Giving a flower arrangement to someone would certainly go a long way in their hearts. It shows that you care for them. And that's exactly what Civil Gardens right here in downtown Richmond is doing. Giving you that opportunity to say that special thank you or I love you to that special someone. Let's go in and have a look and see what goes on in the business. How is this going to work? First, you put preservative in your vase and okay. fill it up with water. Right. Now, this preservative is in a powder form? Yes. Okay. A little, just a little dab. All right. And then, you have to go to your work table and put tape on it. This is the best way to cheat to do this. Okay. You make a little grid in the top. Why, why are you doing this? This is to make sure that the flowers are arranged properly? Yes, because okay. when you just stick them in the vase, they just go all over the place. Yes, right. you do. And this will make them stay where you want them. Okay. Now, is this a technique which you have come up with, or you've learned this from someone? Um, I'm, this has been around a long time. Okay. And some people don't use these. They um, Use the, the leather leaf fern and sure. just kind of stick that in there. Right. I find this easier. Ooh, this is the first time I'm seeing it. I usually see people using it like that. I learned this when I started working here. Okay. How long have you been working here? Um, this is either four or five years. I think it's mm -hmm. four. Cool. All right. Sure. Got ours behind you. And everyone does this differently. Mm -hmm. We all that work here do them differently and start differently. And on your roses, you want to take out the outer petals that aren't perfect. Okay. And kind of just do that. And you kind of just guess at your height. Mm -hmm. The fonts have to be removed. Sometimes, sometimes we have to remove them right. ourselves. You okay. find out quickly if you have to. Uh, you know. Now, why was that spray? This is leaf shine. Leaf to make shine. the leaves shiny. Okay. It makes them look like they're wet. Okay. And I usually start with my middle, whatever I'm going to put in the middle. Mm -hmm. right. And of course it's not going to stay until you get some more things mm -hmm. in there. Right, sure. And how long would an arrangement like this keep? It should keep for over a week. It really depends. Um, some things just don't last as long as others. Roses, I'd say a week is good. And sometimes one you pick for the center ends up not being the center. Okay. And then you can start using the leather. To... And what is that called? This is leather leaf fern. Okay. We just call it leather, which is very deceiving. And on an average, how long would it take for you to make an arrangement? Like, say, the 12 roses. Exactly. Um, average for me is probably a little longer than average for Gail, okay. or Joyce, who are faster than I am. Um, okay. I'd say 15 minutes to do a dozen roses. Okay. It depends on how many interruptions you get, sure. things like that. And do you have orders coming from across? The world, or is it? Yes, we've got orders from England that I know of. Wow. Um, I think there was Germany one time. We get them from Hawaii, Texas. So, how do people hear about uh, Tivoli Gardens? Is there a website? We have our own website. We are also um, part of FTD and Teleflora okay. and 1 800 Flowers, which wow. we're on the computer system. If sure. you go through them, we, we pop up. Yeah. That's awesome. Final touch that you add into the bouquet? Yes, it is. It's the caspia filler. Caspia, alright. Just adds a little color. Mm -hmm. Fills up any little spaces you might have that you don't want in there. Sure. The idea is not to get too much of it no, in there. Right? Just, just a splash here. Right. Let's see what that one does right there. 
and you have a dozen nurses. That's fantastic. I think that's a great job. Well, thank you for showing me that. You're it's welcome. A pleasure. Thank you. Hi, Gail. Thank you so much for having us today. Uh, please tell me about the chimes because I've seen a lot throughout this whole store. We have several different sizes of the wind chimes. Um, mm -hmm. These are from Stanner, J. Stanner. Okay. Um, they are all hand tuned, oh. hand ground, and they each um, play a chord or a tune that relates to some specific thing. Wow. And uh, they're very nice. Um, they all have the wooden top. Right. And they're weatherproof. You can put them outside. Okay. So, do they only come in steel? Like, I see the tubing in steel, but I have come across a few which are in wood as well. Um, these do not. Or if the company has them, we have never stocked the wood right. ones. Right. Okay. Um, but I have seen what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Those are nice too. Right. But everything we have is, is wood metal. Right. Um, we have a few things that I think are a little bit different from what a, a lot of flower shops carry. Right. Uh, we have tried to go into some more gift items than normal flower shops have. Sure. Uh, and we've enjoyed doing that. One thing that we do that is different is cookie cookies. Cookie cookies. Okay. Yes. That's a nice thing, uh, particularly uh, if you'd like to send a gift to a man mm -hmm. or maybe a student. Right. Uh, you want to send something for a thank you or whatever the occasion sure. might be, but you don't want to send flowers always. So Absolutely. Cookie so. bouquets like this up here. Right. It's a little different idea, and we do those in different sizes. Okay. Uh, we get chocolate chip cookies and mm -hmm. snickerdoodles, wow. and we wrap each one and put them in a container like this. Okay. And so do you place an order for the cookies? Yes, we order right. them specifically for right. each order that we receive. Sure. And uh, during Christmas, is this something which a lot of people do use as gifts, or do you so, see the, the sales of this constant throughout the year? This is more throughout the year, yeah. uh, yes. Birthdays, anniversaries, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes to, to the hospital. We've taken them to the hospital quite oh. a few times. Okay. Um, so. I think it's a real fantastic idea. Thank you. Yeah. We enjoy it. We enjoy doing them. They're fun. That's great. All right. Thank you so much, Gail, for having us here today, and I wish you all the best in your business. Thank you so right. much. Thank you. All right. Back to you, Tim. This concludes another episode of In Your Business. Today we met with Gail Luckett, and she's the entrepreneur who owns Tivoli Gardens in Richmond, Indiana. Prior to that, she owned a uh, child boutique, and she uh, served children, uh, well, parents of children. And what happens is she found herself in an environment where she was with 13 other entrepreneurs who moved on. So she had to make changes and move on herself. Uh, she wasn't sure where she was going to be, but she knows where she's at now, and she's very excited about it. She affects our community in many ways. She serves them, she puts a smile on their face, she takes care of a need for those who have it. And what she really does is she listens. She thought she was going to go into a retirement type area in her life where maybe things were going to slow down. Instead, she went into entrepreneurship. What she found is very rewarding and she's enjoying it. She's willing to put 50 hours a week into something that she's passionate about. That's true entrepreneurship. So thank you for watching In Your Business.